Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to look at the class 45 models in double O gauge and we're going to look at the Batman one and the new Helljam model. Um, first of all we're going to look at the Batman one in detail and then we're going to move on to the brand new Helljam one. Um, we're going to see what the differences are and then we're going to have a little running session at the end. So first off is the Batman model. So the Batman model, um, there it is, R2685SD. Um, it was a regional exclusive, as it says on the box. Um, 45041, the Royal Tank Regiment. And the reason I picked this is it is preserved locomotive. And I have trouble behind it on the West Somerset Railway at Diesel Gala. So what else did we get in the box? Well, there is a housing for a speaker. We've got some pipes in there. Some hoses and some screws. Now there's the blanking plate because I've already fitted this with a 21 pin decoder. There's that. Uh, it also came with etched nameplates and obviously the backing plate there, the wrong way around. But it'll have the, uh, the tank on it, the picture of the tank. So there's that. And obviously, you've got your instruction leaflet here. And I'll take it apart. And on the back, where to fit your pipes, hoses. There. Right, so get this one apart. It was a little bit fiddly. It wasn't too bad. But the uh, there's a little tiny screw there. Look. So you need to get remove that one. And then you've obviously got your screws there, each end. And then again, another little tiny one there. Now, whilst it's upside down, we'll have a look at underneath. Now, this one is only four axle drive. It's got two axles on each bogey which drive. The middle or central axle is free running. It also doesn't have any pickups on. So it only picks up on the driving wheels. Same on this bogey. So I'll remember that for later when we look at the hell jam on. The details. You got a driver in that end. Handrails are separately applied, but everything else is moulded. Nice crisp arrow there. And that's come out very nicely there as well. So this one on the roof, it's had the uh, tank covers plated over. And, uh, in the early days, these would have been... You can remove these. The other model I've got, the Helljam one, hasn't got these fitted, but they come extra. But we'll go into that when we look at that one. Come on, focus, that's better. There's the fan there. It doesn't move. To go at the ends. The handrails there, separately applied. The lamp irons, they're separate. The window wipers, they're plastic but separate. Glazing. Let pick up in the cab interior. Yeah. So well, you've got the cab interiors picked out quite well in there. On the inner side of the model, it's pretty much the same. 
but for some reason on this side they haven't printed the tank emblem i don't know if that's on purpose or, or a mistake i'm not sure there's a pony pony wheel there it came with couplings fitted ready we've got sprung buffers Got a bit of wire there that's separately applied. Um, I think the bogeys could have been picked up a bit better, maybe. So there's that one then. Now these came out earlier this year, I believe, or was it late? 2021 i can't really remember but i picked this one up second hand uh, from the local model shop it was the owner's model so it's been well looked after Oh, it doesn't want to focus in on that area. A bit weird. But they've been moulded on there. Well, that's moulded. It's not separate. Right, we'll take a look at the Helljam one now. So here's the Helljam one. Uh, model number 45104. Uh, 64 Coldstream Guardsmen. Now these are fairly new models as I've made this video. Uh, they've only been out maybe a month. And I've, they've already come out second hand. This one was a second hand purchase. What we're going to do is take a look in the box. Because there's a lot more in the box uh, on this model. So we'll uh, open the box up and we'll take a look inside. Right, so when you first get your model, this will be screwed to the bottom of it, like that, and that will be placed into the bottom of the plastic cube in the box. So just quickly unscrew it, two screws, nice and easy, comes off. It's just to protect the bottom of here, because there's lots of fine details on here, which could get damaged in transit. Um, what else do we get in the box? We've got a magic wand. Now if you read manual it'll tell you that the cab lights you can turn on and off with your wand on dc running only on dcc you can uh, operate them using a uh, six function decoder and it'll be one of the functions in the bag there's uh, lots of little bits and pieces in there uh, you'll notice there's two couplings in there still, and I've already fitted one on here. This one did not come with the model. This is just a spare one I'm laying around because I didn't want to open the bag and have all these bits going everywhere. So when you buy your model, it will come without any couplings fitted. So the manual is pretty good. You've got the history of the locomotive. Um, and all the different variations and what periods they would have run in. A uh, detailed parts diagram there. I'll tell you about how you move the body. The lighting functions. If you wanted to fit sound. Uh, it doesn't tell you exactly where to put these on a drawing, but they're all listed there. A lot of the items, as you can read there, for the static display only. There are a few items like that. Um, guessing they'll probably fall off while the uh, bogeys in running. And then on the back, just uh, info on how to run your locomotive properly. So removing the body on this one. Like I said, I've got a six function decoder in this one. Now getting the body of this one was a bit more of a struggle. There's two screws there, which were fairly easy to get to. 
But on the other bogey, they're quite difficult because there's a bit of detail in there on a bogey and it won't move very far because you've got this bit of detail here. About there. So if you force it too much, you're going to break that bit off. But uh, installing the decoder itself, once the body was off, was easy. So I've got a six function Imperium decoder in this one. In fact, it's the only time I fitted an Imperium decoder or anything and it's worked properly. So all the lights work, but we'll go through that when we do our running. So we'll have a look at the uh, details now. So you've got handrails, the cab window slightly open. The handrails there are very fine, fine detail added on. Uh, as you can see here, the covers have been taken off this model. It's slightly earlier, um, probably early 70s, late 60s, this model, whereas the Batman 1 is probably late 70s, 80s variation. It's the uh, name there, Cold Stream Guardsman. Nicely done. Bogey's got quite a large amount of detail on them. I said there, that's there's separate. Looks like it's going to fall off actually. Yeah, we'll pick up the other end for uh, looking at the end because the other end's got a couple in fitted. But this is how it comes, it's straight out of the box. You've got three bits of pipe there. And the hose. Now these come already fitted to your model. You haven't got to worry about fitting them. However, one of mine was a loose, so I had to reattach it. The handrails there are separately applied. The lamp irons there, again separate. The ones on the corner here look a bit bulky, but uh, that's what they are. They are lamp irons. The cab interior is a lot more detail than this one. See a hand wheel there on that side. Trying to get the desk, see if I can get the desk in view. Yeah, it's a lot more detailed this one. As you expect for new tooling. Lost call. Hang on. There we are. Apologies for that. So the roof detail. Like I said, the covers are off this one, so you can get to the uh, boiler hatches because these would have had steam heating when new. Now you notice that you can see into the workings of the locomotive which I found was a bit disappointing. They could have done with a bit of a plate over there to hide the wiring and that masking tape. Might be something I'll do later on. Take a quick look underneath. Now these drive on uh, six axles on this one. Pick up on the six axles as well. The front pony truck is loose to uh, move around. You will notice, I have had this running before, but it does squeak a lot. And the reason for that is there's a little peg. I'll do a bit of pick up a camera there. And when that rubs on the inner side of the body here, it squeaks. So I'm going to try and put a bit of oil or maybe a bit of graphite in there from a pencil. Um, let's see if that will cure that because it does squeak a lot when it runs. Right, I'll quickly grab the Batman one now and we'll compare the two side by side. Right, so we've got the Batman one on the bottom and the new Hell Jam one at the top. 
And first thing you'll notice is the shade of blue. The Helljam one is much darker than the Batman one. Um, rightly or wrongly. I think it's down to personal preference which one you think is correct. I prefer the lighter shade from Batman, but that's just my personal choice. Um, you'll notice straight away the level of detail on the Helljam one compared to the Batman one on the bogeys. And the underframe detail, there's a lot more on the uh, Helljam one. As you can see, these are plated over. So this is a later version from the 80s. And the uh, this model I have here is from the 70s. Now Haljan do do different variations of this one, um, covering their work in life. So it all depends on which version you want. I have got photographs of both of these working in the Western region, which is the reason why I uh, picked them up. I prefer the lamp irons on the Batman one. I think they're modelled better. The Helljam one looks a bit clumsy. You've got your free axle there floating around on the Batman one. There's the shaft there moulded in the plastic look. So, yeah. So lots of detail differences. I know a few people uh, were talking about the cab roof not being right on the Helljam one. You can compare the two there. You can see the window wipers on the Helljam one are much finer detail and the Batman ones are a bit chunkier the handrails on the door are a lot thinner and finer on the Helljam one they're a bit chunkier on the Batman one right so now we're going to get them running like I said I've fitted these with Dakota the Batman one has a Gage Master 21 pin Dakota and this one has a, a Imperium six function decoder from Dapol. So we'll have a look at this one first. We'll run it up and down and then we'll look at the Helljam one and go for the lighting functions on it. So we're going to quickly run the Batman one up and down the track. Now bearing in mind these are now DCC fitted so uh, the running quality will change. Um, compared to when they were new on a DC. So the Batman one, lights are either on or off, and then change direction. Uh, there's no cab lighting, you've just got directional lights. So we'll just run him up the track. As you can see, it stops rather abruptly, but that'd be the decoder. The settings only changing. So I'll just run him out the way. Right, so the Helljan one. We'll go through the lighting functions. If I can get me controlled to work. Right, so your directional lighting's the same for either end. Let's see if I can get the other end. Right, 
uh, but your tail lights are on the function buttons. So that's function one. If I go back to the other end, function two, we'll switch that one on. And then you've got three and four will be cab lighting. So that's number three. And there's number four. So all the lighting is independently controlled, which is uh, much better really. The tail lights being able to control. I'm not too fussed about cab lighting really, but the uh, being able to turn the tail lights on and off is a great help. So I'll just run him up and down here a little bit. Well, like I said, this has got the Imperium decoder in it. Oh, just noticed that wheel's not on the track. There we are, that's better. I'll just run around this curve so you can experience the squeak that it makes from the peg running on the uh, on the side of the body. It didn't squeak that much that time. Maybe I've cured it. I'll try a bit faster. Seems to run better now. I've had a look at the uh, squeaky peg. There's a little bit of a squeak still there. There you are, you can hear it a bit there. So, yeah, it runs across second radius curves fine. Uh, I wouldn't recommend running it on second radius curves all the time. Um, the Batman one runs better over second radius curves, but this one is a bit lumpy. So I've got a set of blue and grey Mark IIs, and I've got a ballast train. So we'll hook them up to that, and we'll have a running session. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you found it useful. I'll just bring the uh, Batman one back into view. yeah so like i was saying uh i hope you found the video useful um i do a lot of comparison videos i've got quite a large collection of models um not sure which one i'm going to do next probably the mana when the uh, acura scale mana comes out i'll probably do a video on that so yeah thanks for watching uh please like and subscribe I'm very close to a thousand subscribers now so that'll help with the uh adverts they um as i'm not getting paid for them at present <clears throat> um please comment as well your views on the model which one you would prefer um i've, I've had them running around for quite a bit and uh, they've both got pros and cons the hell jam one definitely looks better with the detailing one um but i think depending on price um yeah it's really mixed bag really so yeah thanks for watching and uh i'll catch you next time